Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is June 23rd, 2017. Taking a look at our current solar conditions, our solar wind speed is sitting right at 318.7 kilometers per second with a density of about 7.3. Still nothing to talk about as we look at sunspot region AR 2664 and AR 2662. Taking a look at our KP indices, right now we're sitting at a quiet one and the 24 hour max again today was at three. Looking at the SDO, we're monitoring the coronal hole, but as you see right now, not much of it left. In fact, anything above the equatorial region, we don't normally feel a whole bunch as far as solar winds and the effects of this coronal hole. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our weather real quick. Looking at the map, it shows us what our uh, current watches and advisories. And as you can see, all along the west coast and the southwest, we're looking at heat advisories. And then we're looking at flood advisories in Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, parts of Alabama, parts of Georgia. So that's the weather today. And then, of course, today's outlook for severe thunderstorms. Uh, we're looking at a good chance in southern Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, and again, Alabama, parts of Mississippi. Very slight chance in Georgia. The rest of the southeast is seeing a chance of storms. And looking at the current radar right now, we see right now the Midwest is full of moisture at this point in time. All right, Mari. Thanks, Jake. I want to bring attention to a group of kids, actually. They're members of a group called Earth to Sky Calculus. They're a group of kids doing cutting-edge science in a little explored realm, 100,000 feet above our heads, the stratosphere. About once a week, they send their experiments aloft using helium balloons to search for new life forms in the stratosphere and monitor the effects of cosmic radiation on the Earth's atmosphere. Their efforts are 100% crowdfunded. As the sun cycle declines, we expect cosmic rays to increase. Is this actually happening? The answer is yes. Spaceweather.com and the students of Earth to Sky Calculus have been monitoring radiation levels in the stratosphere with frequent high-altitude balloon flights over California. Here are the latest results current as of May 2017. The data show cosmic ray levels intensifying with an approximately 13% increase since March 2015. Cosmic rays are high-energy photons and subatomic particles accelerated in our direction by distant supernovas and other violent events in the Milky Way. Usually, cosmic rays are held at bay by the sun's magnetic field, which envelopes and protects all the planets in the solar system. But the sun's magnetic shield is weakening. In 2017, as the solar cycle shifts from solar maximum to solar minimum, more and more cosmic rays are therefore reaching out to the planet. How does this affect us? Cosmic rays penetrate commercial airlines, dosing passengers and flight crews enough that pilots are classified as operational radiation workers. Some research shows that cosmic rays can seed clouds and trigger lightning, potentially altering the weather and the climate. Furthermore, there are studies linking cosmic rays with cardiac arrhythmias in the general population. The sensors we send to the stratosphere measure X-rays and gamma rays, which are produced by the crash of primary cosmic rays into the atmosphere. The energy range of sensors is similar to that of medical X-ray machines and airport security scanners. Please check out the links below for more information. That's all. Back to you, Jake. All right. Thanks, Mari. That's going to do it for us today. Please remember to like and share. We'll talk soon.